Hey guys, Caleb with White Metal Games here. Today's cheat code is going to be snow basing. We're going to be working with uh, snow bases. This is a continuing series that we've done already. Um, we've been working on basing on our cheat code series. Um, on our last video, we did a Martian style desert yellow base. And today we're going to be doing snow basing using the same basic technique. So this essentially builds on the technique we did last time um, where we used this glazing spot bond putty to um, spread thinly out material over the surface of this uh, 40 millimeter base in order to basically create um, a medium that we're going to now use to create our snow bases. So what we've got here is we've got this very, very rich uh, sort of texture with a lot of variation. And you can see that where it was spread thinly, it's actually cracked. And that is actually something that's going to really serve our purpose. The idea for these bases came from after seeing that. And I, to go and get me wrong, there's lots of really great tutorials out there on basing. Um, lots of people do it. We're always looking for new ways to do it and for new ways to do it more quickly. Um, so this is going to be essentially a kind of an ice base, if you will. It's less a snow base and more of an ice base. So what you have here is you have a base that's already dried and it's already been uh, primed. And then we also lay down a basic layer of white pre-shade just to start to create some of the, uh, the variations in terms of like where our highlights going to be, that kind of thing. Um, so what we're going to do on the snow basin today is we're basically going to build it up so that the surface area is fairly white and that the deep recesses are a very, very dark, rich blue. Um, and we're going to do that with just a few colors. So to start with on our snow bases, we're going to use this color. This is called French Blue by Vallejo. Now, French Blue is a very, very, very um, highly pigmented blue. And I love this color. I, I use it all the time. I think it's a great color. It's great for um, ultramarines. It's great for night lords. It's great for house Terran knights from Imperial Knights. You can really use it with just minor variations for just about anything. And the thing that's great about it is that the pigment is so rich and strong that you get this really nice, decent blue. Um, uh, I, I'm just a huge fan of this color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this for the most part to the whole base, but I'm going to focus it much more on the, the cracks than anything else. Because when we're all said and done, what I want are cracks, the cracks to be kind of a rich blue. So it looks like this is maybe the surface of a lake that's been thinly dusted over, and there's rich blue water beneath that. So I'm just going to start to apply it, and I'm going to focus it on the cracks first. And that's going to ensure I get the coverage I want. So rather than do one heavy pass, I'm going to do a couple light passes so I can build up the color more slowly. I'm also going to go ahead and hit some of the bevel with it too. Get some of this red off of here. Alright. That's pretty good. So one of the things you can already see is that the blue over different areas looks a little different. Over black, it looks much richer and darker. So all we've done so far to this base is just prime it black, pre-shade it white, and we've now applied a blue. So I'm going to lock that blue in just a little bit more by adding a little bit more to those cracked areas. And once I get that nice and rich, I'm just going to go ahead and dust the top as well. All right, great. So now I'm going to bring up that those flat areas a little bit with just a light blue. So this is called Snow Shadow by Reaper. And this is a, a really great color. It's basically just kind of a pale blue color. Um, now, I don't know how friendly it's going to be to our airbrush. Some, some paints are not super airbrush friendly. I can already tell this is going to be a little thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a little bit more than I really need. And then I'm going to thin it out by airbrush or by uh, with a mixture. I've been told um, that the mixture for thinning should be something like four parts to one, um, but I just always kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to mix that in. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to grab my brush. My paint's a little, a little thick. All right. So now, just looking at it there on the paper, I can tell you that that's too thin. So I know I'm going to have to thicken it up just a little bit. All right. 
take a look at that. Pretty good, much thicker. I'm not entirely sure it's where I want it to be. Alright, so now we've got this pale blue with just a hint of a white to it. It's more blue than white. And that's okay. I'm going to add just a little bit more paint to that. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go over the surface of those flat areas to get it to separate it from that dark blue. There we go. That's about white. That's about the color that we want to go for. Okay, so now we're just going to basically focus this for the most part on these flat areas. Try to leave it in the recesses. So to facilitate that, I'm going to turn down my PSI just a little bit. I'm currently working at, looks like I'm at about a 15. I feel like that's, that's okay. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. So somewhere around 20. All right, great. So I'm going to move it a little closer, and the goal is if you go close but go lighter on your PSI, you won't, essentially if I just blast it from a distance, I get just, it goes everywhere, right? So I'm going to move in closer, work a little slower, and try to avoid the cracks. So now that I've got my basic shapes defined, I'm going to move a little bit further back and just kind of lightly dust. And I'm doing that to sort of blend out some of those places like here in the middle where it's a very clear separation of color. I want to soften that transition just a bit. Without completely obliterating the colors in the recesses. All right, cool. So now we've got a pretty interesting, pretty varied surface. It's got darker blues here towards the cracks, um, and lighter blues certainly there in the center, kind of a snowish shadow. We could sort of stop there, um, but we're definitely not going to. Now, one thing that's happening is you're seeing that some of the um, blue is being lost to this. And that's okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just keep pushing this a little further and then go back and work the blue back in at the end. So now I'm going to add just a drop of two of white to this. This is golden white, which is a high flow acrylic white. So we want to get some white. Um, but we want a touch of that blue left in the pot if we can get it. So anything that's left in there right now is going to help to hopefully add the mix to this. And then we're going to focus this color into the center of these areas to basically make it a, a true, a, a, a full highlight. And with this, we want to definitely, definitely avoid um, the cracks as much as we can. Okay, so now you're starting to see the build up there, and you can see that we've got essentially these different levels of blue. We've got the dark, deep blue down there in the recesses, we have this mid-tone blue, and then we've got the, the whiter highlights there, which are essentially meant to emulate snow. So we've got a, a pretty rich surface in my opinion. Now I can focus the highlights in a few places to make it a little more interesting visually. Push it towards the edges a little bit. Okay. So now it's visually appealing. It's aesthetically pleasing to look on. The only thing I'm, I'm not happy with is that I don't have as much rich blue down there in the crevices anymore. 
Uh, I know on the camera, on the monitor, it looks like there's a, a ton. So when you actually see it in person, it's actually not quite as blue. So um, my options here are if I want to work in just a little bit of blue, I could go back to the original color. And I could basically... Oops. What I can do is I can focus this a little bit on the recesses and I can then bring out the color a little bit that way. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus the French blue um, on the recesses and then basically see where that goes. I have a little white left over in my cup so the color is going to come out a little odd but that's okay. So for this, I'm going to turn down my PSI, because French blue is a really nice thin blue. And I don't want to work too, I don't want to, I want to not, I want to not get it on the white if I can avoid it. So I'm going to work a little slower, a little lower, and as close to the base as I can come. Okay, so we brought back some of that blue, which we now have to, of course, um, lighten. So we're going to add white back to our pot. So now my goal is basically to leave as much of that dark blue in the recesses as I can and uh, try to hit it on the hard edges there and try to work that away. So I'm going to do that by working, pushing away from it a little bit, starting on the edge and then kind of working in very gradually. So what I'm doing is I'm starting on the edge and I'm working my way inward so that the overspray is what's really hitting that line of blue. And essentially it's not me targeting it so much as indirect fire, which is going to uh, make it a much softer transition, almost like a, a blend kind of. So you can see there, it's a more natural transition as opposed to right above it. This looks like a natural fade, whereas that does not. So we're going to do that around all of that. So as you can see, even though there's a lot of blue left there, it's starting to soften that transition between the two. It's not as clearly defined. So now we've got basically discoloration around the cracks. Um, it's not truly like blue, but nor is it truly white. And there's definitely a differentiation. So that's essentially what I want. I'm um, pretty happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is clean my pot one more time. And I'm essentially done airbrushing at this point. I'm not going to do any more airbrushing uh, on this particular um, base. What I am going to do, though, is if I want to bring back that blue one last time, I'm going to use a very thinly watered down wash um, to seep it down into there. So I'm going to just going to use the airbrush just to dry it at this point. Great. Feels pretty good. Now I'm going to use this color, which is called Vallejo Game Ink Blue. This is a very rich pigmented blue. Um, it's, it, it's honestly a little too strong in my opinion. Um, but one of the things I've learned about it is that if you thin it, the pigments are so strong that you get that rich dark blue even thinned out. Um, and that's what I want. I want that dark blue that I can focus here in these cracks and then I can blend it out a little bit by brush. Um, just to smooth it so I get that pigmented color I want there in the center. So I'm going to focus that on the cracks. I'll thin it out just a little bit more. I'm going to focus it down here in these cracks and then I'm going to blend it out by brush. So I lay it down, grab the brush, use plenty of water on the brush, nice and wet. And I'm just going to basically thin out the transition by pulling that paint and that pigment away but leaving it there in the crack. So again, paint in the crack. There you go. Yes. Looks good. Thin it out. Pull it away. And you pull it out more thinly as you go. Try to leave it in those recesses as best you can. Rather than do one heavy pass, we do a couple light passes. Just building up that color. Ooh. 
maybe a little too much there. All right, and when you see that pooling, just pull it away. Blend it out nice and smooth. And it's okay if you focus it, grab a little bit of that and work it into some of these cracks on the edges where it's, you know, you've got all this variation. Basically define them a little bit. So hopefully what you're getting is you're getting this like blue wash almost down into these kind of textured areas. Um, and that's really it. Okay. So now we've got a nice rich dark blue down there in the recesses, uh, sort of a, a much lighter white surface area, and hopefully a fairly, fairly natural blend between the two where it gets darker uh, towards the cracks and lighter as you work towards the flat areas. And that's basically about it. So this is what I'm, I'm calling a, a cracked ice base, and I'm a big fan of it. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, on our next cheat code, we'll be doing lava, and we'll be doing it two different ways. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, ice ice base tutorial. Check out more of our cheat codes on Patreon.com/slash White Metal Games. We give away models every single month. 